Hi there. My name is Alex Vanston. I want to welcome you to the AngularJS Services and Directives course. Before we dive into the actual content, let's take a quick moment to discuss some of the requirements for this course, as well as what our goals are and what we're hoping to accomplish over the next several stages. First off, let's take a look at the topics that this course is not going to cover and the concepts and understandings that you should have before moving on to the rest of the course. As far as requirements go, you really want a good working knowledge of AngularJS. This means we're not going to talk about how to install it into your application or load the script file into your index.html. Nor are we going to discuss how to create modules and directives or the different ways that factories, controllers, and filters can all work together. Secondly, you want a good understanding of scope and how it can propagate throughout an entire application and even the different ways that it can be inherited or isolated based on your directive. Next, you want a good understanding of dependency injection as well and how that can be used to pull in different bits of information as well as share that information in a single way across your entire app. As far as core JavaScript concepts go, you'll want to really know how prototypal inheritance works and some of the differences between reading and writing to certain properties and values as you go up and down the object tree. Secondly, the concept of promises and how they're used to handle data coming back from asynchronous callbacks and when you may or may not want to actually use them. Finally, you'll want a good understanding of the difference between passing by value and passing by reference. We'll cover that in brief as we get to it and it becomes important, but you'll want to be able to have a good understanding of the JavaScript component going in that we are able to focus on the actual AngularJS specific nature of what we're talking about. As far as goals go, we really want to focus on supercharging your web apps. And what I mean by that is we're not going to be talking about things that you might see in a tutorial or the documentation online, but rather we're going to be covering more advanced topics that'll hopefully take your applications to the next level. For example, we're going to be adding system-wide messaging. As you're probably aware, Angular already provides a way to broadcast and emit up and down the DOM tree. But what we're going to do is create a messaging framework that allows you to communicate across your entire app without any respect to the DOM tree or not even be bound to it at all in such a way that filters can talk to factories, can talk to services, and then directives can use all that brought back in. Secondly, we'll also look at some of the ways you might coordinate multiple directives via a controller. This is much the same way that Angular itself uses a form directive to coordinate all the inputs within it. Next, we're going to focus on best practices. This is both for AngularJS in specific and JavaScript in general. And part of the goal of our best practices here will be to create testable directives and services. Oftentimes, as I'm sure you're aware, as your application begins to get bigger, you find that most of your testing turns into a lot of mocking and a lot of spaghetti code that has to be wired up at the very beginning just to be able to test anything. So what we're going to do instead is look at how to pull some of those pieces apart and write them in such a way that they're easily unit tested and modular, that they can be tested one-on-one -on -one without hundreds of mocks necessary just to get going. Along those lines, we'll talk about how to abstract some of the promise logic whenever possible, and not only how, but when you might want to, and in what cases it'd be better to just leave it in place. Thirdly, we're going to talk about making modules more modular. And what I mean by that is modules that are easier to use across multiple apps and in different ways. Key part of this is making them fully configurable, whether that's something like an API key or a token, or just allowing your users to set defaults, such as a page size or a URL that it wants to point to. We'll also talk about only loading what you need and progressive enhancement. As front-end developers, we often talk about progressive enhancement based on what a browser can do. Does it have JavaScript? Can it handle 3D transformations? Things like that. What we mean here, though, is what is already available within my Angular application. For example, if you've got a content plugin that optionally can parse Markdown, then you only want to look for that Markdown plugin if the configuration says you want it. And you don't want to blow up the entire Angular app just because someone didn't load markdown.parser in their original app requirements. Finally, we really want to stick to real world value. And what I mean by that is everything we're going to talk about over the next several videos has been learned from building actual apps and modules. We're going to avoid all the theory that goes into this and try to stay away from things like micro optimizations. There's lots of great tutorials and articles out there on how you can save five milliseconds when iterating over thousands of entities. And they're great and they're things you should be learning. But oftentimes what you find is those five seconds that you save cost you a day or two in development time. And so instead, what we're going to talk about is that balance between the best practice, how to make something that's testable, how to make it efficient. We do want to focus on some optimizations and just how to make it modular and easy to use in a hundred different ways. And also what's writable. None of these practices should make you slower at writing code, but ultimately after a time or two of trying to implement them, they should make you faster. It should make everything come together a whole lot easier. 